Now, welcome to our broadcast. My name is Prophet Danny Son Baraka. For those of you who are here for the very first time, and tonight we're here for another topic that will bless your life, change your life, and your life will never be the same again in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now, I'm very sorry because we are running out of time. You know, it took me time to set all this up, but by the grace of God, we are here and we're going to go straight. Let me pray, then we can start the word of tonight. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you. Thank you for your ability that you have given us to minister to your people tonight. Thank you for life that is going to be connected here. Thank you for those who will be watching on YouTube. Thank you for what you have done. We thank you for the great thing that you are starting in our ministry. Thank you for the great thing that you are starting in this broadcast on TikTok. Father, I believe those that are connected, their life will never be the same after listening to this word. Holy Spirit, we invited you to come and minister to your people, speak to your people, preach to your people, teach your people, restore their life, change their life in the name of Jesus. Deliver those who are bound, those who are in oppressed, heal the brokenhearted in the name of Jesus. Your people have not come to see a man, but they came to see you, Lord. Meet them in the point of their need in the name of Jesus. Christ we pray amen amen God bless you now uh, if you're coming on YouTube uh, I mean on TikTok just stay on TikTok I'm gonna be prophesying for people who are on TikTok amen I'm gonna be speaking to you sometime I'm gonna be looking at you but I'll be focused here I'm very sorry for this uh, next time we'll come up with a better setup so that I can be straight to you amen do you forgive me for that do you forgive me for that my people on tiktok please forgive me the reason why i'm doing this so you can get a better quality image of this message after on youtube amen so after this session the video will be up on youtube a better quality quality sound you can see my mic is back and the camera is right in front of me so i'm here as well now the topic of tonight i want you to share the topic of tonight is we are dealing with the spirit of backsliding amen we are dealing with the spirit of backsliding are you hearing me we are dealing with the spirit of backsliding now you need to understand this is one of the spirits operate in every christians if there is a spirit that everybody experience or they are being manipulated of is the spirit of backsliding are you listening to me either you are pastor you are evangelist you are prophet you are simple believer once in your life you were you went through backslide amen once in your life you have backslide from the things of god once in your life you are you felt tired you felt tired of following jesus once in your life you gave up in prayer once in your life you thought things was not good for you amen you thought the work with christ is is, is meaningless is no is there's no result why because maybe the promises of god was taking long amen so tonight we're here i want you to have your pen and copy ready because we're gonna be dealing with this spirit tonight and i believe if you are going under this god is going to set you free and god is going to deliver you in the name of jesus christ now i have three points that i wrote down when the holy spirit was speaking to me about this topic they are uh, points that i wrote down and i want you to have it so i want you to have your pen and your copy ready so you can get whatever i'm about to give to you tonight amen so we are dealing with the spirit of backsliding what is a backslider a backslider person is the person that once received jesus in their life are you listening to me and a backslider is someone that once received jesus in their life they gave up on bad things they came from the world and they believe in jesus christ as their lord and savior and suddenly too, they went back in the world that's what we call backsliding once you gave your life to christ everything is good you begin to experience the power of god change in your life and suddenly we don't recognize you anymore as a christian and you just went in the world you begin to live your life as the way you were living it before 
Are you listening to me? So you begin to live your life as the way you were living it before. You're no longer praying, you're no longer fasting, you're no longer attending church service. You went back to night club, you went back doing everything that you were doing before you became a Christian. And this is the spirit that has been operating in the body of Christ. This is the spirit that has been operating in the church of God. This is the spirit that has been operating in men and women of God. Are you listening to me? Including the apostle of God. Once they felt tired. Amen. Once they felt like giving up. Once they felt like backsliding with Christ. They said, ah, master, we have left our house. We have left our children. We have left our wife. What are we going to gain? We have been following you since. But what is, so, what is our interest by following you? And Jesus said to them, he said, not only you'll be blessed here, you'll be blessed also in heaven. Amen. He said you're going to receive a hundred percent on earth and hundred percent in heaven. Now, this a hundred percent on earth, amen. Hundred percent in heaven, people tend to believe they will receive a hundred percent in heaven because they know that ah when i will die jesus will reward me will give to every man according to what they have received what they have done on earth so there is a reward after life in heaven are you listening to me there is a reward in heaven after life so people believe in 100 percent in heaven but they don't believe someone said the network is breaking on tiktok Oh my God, what is happening? Let's fix this. Thank you, Jesus. Is it okay now? Um, Sarah, tell me now, is the network okay on TikTok? Now, for those who are watching on TikTok, I'm very sorry. I'm trying to get the... Um, is it okay now? Okay, God bless you. Now, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. We tend to believe we'll receive a hundredfold in heaven or a hundred percent in heaven because we know that there is life after that. But while we're still on earth, we don't believe that we'll get a hundred percent on earth. Why? Simply because you are not seeing the result. You are not seeing the promises of God being manifested. Amen. So therefore, people tend to go back in the world. Are you listening to me? People tend to go back in the world and they start the life that they have left for. Now, if you read Galatians chapter 3 verse 1, go to the book of Galatians chapter 3 verse 1, you see that Paul was attacking Galatians. He said, Oh, you foolish Galatians, who has been with you that you have started in the spirit, now you end in flesh? Are you listening to me? He said, Oh, you foolish Galatians, who has been with you that you have started in the spirit and you end up in flesh? So, what it caused people now, if you read Galatians chapter 3 verse 3 you see that paul said that you were once in the spirit and now you begin to walk according to the desire of the flesh who has been with you now we have a lot of people in the kingdom of god we have men and women of god who once started in the spirit who once started in the holy ghost who once was speaking in tongues but today they are even the one that are killing the church they are the one that gossiping about the church they are the one making sure that the works of god does not go forward the ones who were in the spirit but now they're no longer in the spirit they are walking according to the desire of the flesh they are walking according to what their flesh is telling them to do now some people maybe before they gave their life to christ they used to do street work they used to fornicate around they used to sleep with men so that they could gain something to eat that was a job for them and that job was paying them that job was making sure that there is food on the table but when they gave their life to christ now the word of god does not allow them jesus does not allow them to live in their old life so therefore they become a christian 
and there is no more that activity happening in their life so the moment that activity has stopped in their life meaning there is not money the way it used to be before now they begin to trust God for an open door or for a job or for a marriage for a man to marry them now the more the job is taking long for them to get and the more the man is taking long to come and marry them what's happened now there is these thoughts that will come to them and begin to say to them you know what when you are in the street when you used to sleep with married men when you used to sleep with around people were giving you money you were receiving something you did not lack what to eat what to wear your life was better now see now you have gave your life to christ nothing is working for you don't you think it's better for you to go in the world don't you think it's better for you to fornicate around don't you think it's better for you now the more you give your ear to this thought to the voice of the devil what to happen is like you say oh, let me try it for the last time i'm so broke let me just go out this night and do it so i can have something to eat and the more you want to do it the more you call yourself into that old sin that you gave up to before the more you want to get something to eat the more you go back to the world that's what we call backsliding you went back to all you to the things that you were not able to do before you begin to do it again And I know men of God, they have church, they have big ministry, but you don't know their life behind the scene. I personally know men of God who they, there is something, there is addiction or there is something in them that they can never give up on. Yes, they're serving God. Yes, they're doing this. But there is one thing, they, they just backslide. And every time you see them calling upon the mercy of God, crying before God say God forgive me this will be the last time I'll do it but they found themselves do it God this will be the last time we have children of God watching on TikTok or on YouTube those are the people of God who are tired of this spirit the devil has been manipulating them bringing them outside the presence of God every time they rise up in prayer the devil will take them outside the presence of God now I want to give you a few Bible scripture before we can uh, uh, pursued in our message tonight now let's go quickly in the book of um, in the book of John chapter 21 John chapter 21 from verse 24 to 25 amen are we together John 21 do you have your Bible with you I believe you have your Bible with you and I'm gonna read with you right now once again I'm very sorry for those who are watching on TikTok I was supposed to be looking at you but there is a camera right in front of me that is the reason why I'm facing this way so sorry for tonight tomorrow we'll find a solution for you so that we can all you know be connected so as long you can hear me that's what matter okay but if you want to find this video go to my youtube page tomorrow and you will find the video and God bless you now take your bible in the book of John chapter 21 are we together John John 21 where are we uh, from verse 24 I want us to see something there uh, thank you Jesus John 21 24 mm. the Bible say this is the disciple of Jesus who testify this thing and who wrought them down we know that it we know that is the test we know that his testimony is true the bible said this is like these are the disciples of jesus christ who testified this thing and wrote them down we know that his testimony is true and verse 25 jesus did many things as well if everything were were written down they were not supposed uh, they were not a place in the book to contain it amen the Bible said Jesus did many things and if everything were going to be written down they were not going to be a book for the thing that Jesus have done during his life or a, a, a room to contain everything Jesus did he performed many miracles he did so many wonders but the Bible say not everything was written down now you need to understand the disciple spent 
the hardest time of their life choosing on what they want to give us amen the disciple especially john he spent time searching and picking the one that need to be revealed to us as children of god and the rest of the thing was kept and the bible said whatsoever is given to us is given to us for our understanding for our revelation whatsoever is hidden is hidden for god now among what john has picked to reveal to us there is a lovely story in the bible amen among what the disciple reveal or chose to give us there is a story that go in according to what we are preaching here tonight and i want us to focus on a man called peter i want us to focus on the man one of the disciple of jesus that in whom jesus loved so much his name was peter now you need to understand the reason why this story is here is for us to benefit from the life of peter because John said there were so many things that Jesus did or so many things happened in the Bible and there is not a book to contain all this if these were going to be written down are you listening to me now you need to understand there are things that we do not know but they were done but there are also things that we know because it was written now among what it was written is the life of Peter that I want us now to focus on tonight are you listening to me now go with me quickly in the book of uh, now I have so many Bible verse tonight I hope you have your copy my people on TikTok I hope you have your copy and book to be writing this now let's go now in the book of um, Matthew chapter 4 verse 18 Matthew chapter 4 verse 18 are we together Matthew chapter 4 verse 18 thank you Jesus um, Matthew, 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 chapter 4, verse 18. We are in the book of Matthew now. Verse 18 of the book of Matthew, chapter 4. Now I'm going to be reading loud so you can hear me. The Bible says, Jesus was walking beside the sea of Galilee, and he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake for they were fish for they were fishermen verse 19 come come and follow me jesus said and i will make you a fisher of men amen now this is the story of of uh, of jesus and peter the very first time jesus met with peter amen the bible said that jesus was walking along the sea of galilee and he saw peter with his brother simon peter and his brother andrew and the bible says he saw them casting their net to the sea amen because they were fishermen amen they were fishing they were there doing their daily job and jesus met with them at the place of their work are you listening to me he met with them at the place of their work while they were busy and working jesus came he said come peter Andrew follow me and I will make you a fisher of men are you listening to me now this is the gospel according to Matthew I always tell you when something happened when something happened here if we were five of us you will give your explanation when the guy when the police are doing the investigation you will give your own version based on what you saw and I, I will also explain based on what I saw, amen, or what, what based on what I've seen. So this is what made you saw and he gave his account. He wrote what he have seen the day Jesus met with Peter. Are you listening to me? Now, I want us to go to Luke and see what Luke said about this. Amen. I want us to go there. We're still in, we're dealing with the spirit of backsliding. Amen. Now, let's go to the book of Luke. We are in the book of Luke chapter 5, starting from verse 1. Do you have your Bible with you? Luke chapter 5, starting from verse 1. We're going to read the same story, but this is the gospel according to Luke. Now, brother Luke said, the Bible said, One day Jesus was standing by the lake. One day Jesus was standing by the lake with the people crowding around him and listening to the word of god amen and verse 2 he saw at the water edge 
two boats left and right where they were a fisherman who were washing their net for street he got into one of the boats the one belonged to simon and he asked him put out a little bit your boat to the water then he sat and taught the people from the boat verse 4 when he had finished speaking he said when the, the bible said when he had finished uh, sorry sorry I, I just got lost i'll start verse 3 again he got into one of the boats the one belonged to simon and he asked him to put out a little uh, to put out a little to put out his boat a little bit to the water then he sat down and taught the people from the boat when he had finished speaking he said simon put out a deep water and let down the net for a catch the bible says verse 5 simon answered master we have walked hard all night and we have not caught anything but because you have said so i will let down my net verse 6 when they had done so they caught such a, a large number of fish in their net and began to break down the bible says verse 7 so they uh, the, so they signal their partner in the other boat to come and help them and they came and filled their boat full and the boat began to sink when simon peter was eight when simon peter saw this he fell at jesus knee and said go away from me lord i am a sinful man verse 9 for he had all these companions were astonished for him and all his companions they were astonished at the catch of the fish that they have taken verse 10 and so were james john the son of zebedee simon partner and jesus said to simon don't be afraid from now i will make you a catch of men amen now this is john i mean jesus walking now from the book of matthew chapter 5 i mean matthew chapter 4 verse 18 the bible said that jesus was walking along the sea of galilee and he saw peter and andrew the two brothers were doing their daily job amen and the bible said that jesus called them say follow me and i'll make you um, a fisherman amen and the bible said that they follow him because jesus has promised him a better job than the one that he was doing and Matthew just end there and continue jesus continue calling the other apostles amen no but luke went a bit further of the story what happened amen and the bible say when jesus was walking in the book of luke chapter 5 verse 1 to 10 when jesus was walking along the sea of galilee he saw peter and he saw andrew not that they were catching fish but the bible say luke said they were washing the net because they worked so hard during the night and there was nothing for them to catch so they were tired they want to wash the net and to go home and the job was done for them for the day amen they were tired working all night nothing to catch and the bible say jesus saw two of the boats one on the left one on the right and he went to the one that belonged to simon peter amen and he sat down and begin to teach the people the word of god because there was a massive crowd that was following jesus so jesus decided to stand on the boat of peter to minister the gospel of god and after that he told peter he said cast out your net to the sea and peter said we have walked all night we gave our energy our effort our experience everything was on the ground but we could not catch any fish but because you have said i will do so and the bible said peter did according to the word of jesus as he did according to the, the word of jesus they caught so many fish that they called their their, 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 their their partner those that they used to go together and fish together they came and helped them i love the story and i love how peter was blessed that day but before we can go down to the revelation there is something if you have noticed that luke have left also oh my god i love the word of god Matthew left the detail on how jesus told peter to catch fish 
We are dealing with the spirit of backsliding. Amen. Matthew left out the information on how Peter became a fisherman. What took place? Matthew left that. He just finished by saying, Jesus said, leave your boat and follow me. I will make you a fisherman. But Luke went to the detail on how Peter caught the fish, but he also left something. He left something very important. What did Luke left if you have read your Bible very carefully? Luke said that when Jesus went at the boat of Peter, the boat that belonged to Peter, Jesus began to teach the people that were following him. Luke took his time to mention that there were people at the beach. There were people at the bay of the sea that Jesus was teaching. But the word that Jesus taught them, Luke did not mention. <laughs> oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. We are going up. Please just stay with me. I feel the anointing of God and I need to preach this word as I'm feeling it. One thing I love is that this message we are recording. It. The reason why I'm facing this way, I'm not facing you people on TikTok because we want this message to be kept very carefully and we want it on YouTube. Amen. Now, the Bible said that Luke mentioned a large detail, but he also left something very powerful. And I was very curious to know what was the message of Jesus on the boat before he was able to tell Peter to cast down his nets to catch fish what was he preaching what were people who were standing there they were listening to what did Jesus told them before the miracle of the fish to happen now before we go to the message in which Jesus was preaching I want you to understand something let's start from here let's bring the first revelation are you ready my people on TikTok now listen to me Jesus has the word and there are people who are available to listen to listen to the word of God are you listening to me Jesus has a word and there are people who are ready to hear from him People with situation, with sickness, with problem, the heartbroken, the lame, the blind, they are ready to be recovered by the message of the Lord. Remember the Bible said in the book of Islam, He sent forth His word and His word healed them and rescued them. So there is a word with Jesus, the preacher, to rescue the people who came to listen from him. The, to heal the people, to set them free. But Jesus need a platform. Ah, uh, you're not listening to me now. Jesus need a platform in which he can deliver this word. Now, what Jesus need, someone has it. Jesus was looking for a platform to stand on so he can minister the word. I have the word. I'm called by God. I have a ministry. I'll be calling you people. Give me a platform, a camera, so we can preach on YouTube. I have the word. There are people who are there with situation. They want to be healed. They want to be restored. But I'm looking for a platform to deliver this message. You're not listening. You're not listening. You're not listening. I have the word to minister. I have people with problem. They are seeking for the face of God. TikTok alone is not okay. We need to be everywhere for this word to be preached. But I'm looking for Peter's boat to stand on so I can minister the gospel in which God has put in me. If Rihanna was coming in town, they said buy your ticket to get a VIP place, you'll be booking by now, sold out. But for the sake of the gospel, the man of God have to repeat himself, repeat himself, sow your seed, do this, let's get a camera, we need to preach, we need to, ah, uh, come on now, come on now. The Bible said, Jesus, he said, Peter, can I get on your boat? I need to minister, there are people who are waiting to hear the word of God. There are people who are waiting. I think the Bible actually said that, right? Let's go back in the book of Mark chapter, I mean Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. Oh my God. Hmm. Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for a verse now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's start from verse 1, please. 
Luke chapter 5, we'll go back to verse 1 so we can get to the place I'm looking for. The Bible says, one day Jesus was standing by the lake and with the people crowding around him to listen to him. Amen. Verse 1, the Bible said there were a lot of people around him, crowded. They wanted to hear what? The word of God. That's what the Bible said. They want to hear, there are people who want to hear the word of God. There are people, there are so many crowded, waiting to hear the word of God. But Jesus needs to be on the platform. Hi. Jesus needs to be standing on something so that he can minister the gospel to them. And he says, Simon Peter, can I get on your boat? And Peter said, yes, go on. And Jesus began to preach to them. Preach the gospel, preach the gospel. Tonight I'm looking for people who can lend me their boats. I'm looking for people who can sow a seed. We are dealing with the spirit of backsliding. I'm just in the beginning. I'm just in my introduction. We are dealing with the spirit of backsliding. I'm looking for people who can say, this is my boat, men of God, stand on and minister the gospel. This is my seed, buy a camera, do this, buy the equipment that we need so that the people who are coming to hear the word of God, the message will pass to them so that they can be restored from whatever addiction they are going to. I'm, on, I'm not looking for many people. I'm looking with people like Peter's heart who can offer their boat for Jesus to stand on, who can give their platform. And now I, 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 I need to let you know that the thing that Jesus was requesting to stand on, it's actually the capital of, of Peter. Peter was depending on that capital for him to make money. Is what he used to use to go and fish, to feed his family. In other words, it was a capital that he was, oh my God, he's saving or whatever. It was, that was what made him a fisherman. His life depend on what he gave Jesus. You're not listening to me. His life is what, <laughs> his life was depending on that. What he gave Jesus, his own life was depending on the boat. Some of you say, I don't have enough. What can I give God? I don't have enough. No. Just that thing that you have last. The widow said, this flower is just for me and my son. I want to bake a cake. Let us eat and die, the man of God. This is our last meal. And the man of God said, bake it for me. Let me eat first. Then you see the miracle of God. <laughs> so Peter gave the boat in exchange of fish. When Jesus preached the gospel, people heard they were healed, they were restored. Then came a miracle. You are looking for a miracle, but what are you giving to God? You are looking for a miracle, but what are you offering to God in exchange of what you are looking for? Now, my attention was caught when Luke said that Jesus stood on the boat of Peter, ministering the word of God to the people of God. But Luke did not tell us what is that Jesus was preaching to them. Jesus, you asked the boat to preach. We were told by Luke that you took the boat of Peter to preach, but what was the message? Oh my God. What was the message? Luke chapter 18 verse 10 to 14. This is the message Jesus, Jesus preached on the boat. Are we together? Luke 18 verse 10 to 14. Is the Holy Spirit preaching better tonight? Luke 18. Let's go. <laughs> oh my God. Thank you Jesus. We are dealing with the spirit of backsliding, right? Luke 18 verse 10 Are we together? Thank you Jesus Thank you Holy Spirit hmm. uh, Let's go to verse 9 please Start from verse 9 Then we go down The, Bi the Bible say Luke chapter 18 verse 9 The Bible say To some who were Confide with their own righteousness They look down on everybody else Jesus told them a parable. Now, this is when Jesus got on the boat of Peter. This is the parable 
he began to teach to the people who were there listening to him he said two men went up to the temple to pray one was a pharisee and the other one was a tax collector and the pharisee stood up and prayed about himself he said god i thank you for i am not like a robber adulterer even like this tax collector i fast twice a week and give my tithe and my offering and all I get amen but the tax collector stood a distance he would not even look up to heaven but beat his chest and said God have mercy on me I'm a sinner verse 14 I tell you that this man I tell you that that this man rather than the other one he went home justified before God for everyone else exhort himself but he humble himself he who humble himself will be exalted amen now a very simple message given by Jesus on Peter's boat he said that there was two men two men went to the temple to pray this is when the platform is given to the men of God. Ay, 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 ay. This is when Jesus is now floating on waters, standing on the boat of Peter. The altar, the atmosphere was prepared for him. The platform was given to him. The people were ready to listen to him. And he began to teach them a very simple message. He said two men went to the temple. Two men went to the temple. One was a Pharisee, one was a tax collector. And the Bible said, the Pharisee, he said, Oh God, I thank you because I'm not like the tax collector. <laughs> he said, I fast twice a week and I give my tithe, my offering. I do everything. I fast. I pray. I'm not like him. He's a thief. He's a robber. He's a murderer. He's this, he's this. Me, I pay it. I pay my tithe. Me, I do this. But the Bible said the tax collector, Jesus said, his head was down. No, even He was not even able to look up to heaven. He was ashamed of himself. But he said to God, he said, Oh God, have mercy on me. Kaya. He said, have mercy on me. He said, have mercy on me forgive me for everything wrong i've been doing and jesus said this man who prayed for the mercy i rather choose him than the tax and the pharisee because he who humble himself will be exalted he who exalted himself will be humbled now we are dealing with the spirits of backsliding what am i trying to say here jesus was trying to give us in the platform of peter a very simple message of Christian. We have Christian who boast themselves. They say, I'm a Christian. I fast. I give this. I give that. I give that. I do this for the church. I'm the one who bought the altar. I'm the one who bought the instrument. I'm a best singer in this church. Jesus said, God does not look on that. He does not look of people who give the soul a seed. He want everybody to know that they saw a, they saw a seed. But God look for the humble one. What am I trying to say here? What Jesus was trying to say is, the moment you begin to exalt yourself, the moment you are doing things for the sake of people to see, is no longer a sacrifice. It's no longer a, a, a something that God can consider that you have done with your heart. You are now showing off that you have better than other, but it does not count to God. God wants those who are humble, who humble themselves so that He lift them up. Amen. And the more you begin to exalt yourself, you are opening a door for the devil to attack you. Amen. Anyway, I just wanted to show you the message that was preached here on the day. Amen. We'll get back to that one day and I will teach you better on that. Let's go back to Peter. Now the Bible says, after the man caught a lot of fish by the instruction of Jesus. Are you listening to me? After Peter caught a lot of fish by the instruction of Jesus, he knelt down before Jesus and he said, Jesus, go away from me because I am a sinner man. 
because I'm a sinful man. I'm not worthy to be close to you. Jesus looked at Peter. He said to Peter, don't worry, Peter. I will make you a fisherman from today. Are you listening to me? From today, you're going to be catching fish. I mean, you'll be going to be catching men instead of fish. And Peter was glad. He went with Jesus. They did everything they could have done. He went with Jesus. They walked in Galilee, Samari, Jerusalem. They went everywhere. Peter was good at his position. One of the disciples that Jesus loved the most was Peter, John, and James. They were actually close to Jesus. When Jesus was having his meeting with the, the apostle that mattered a lot to him, Peter was among them. In this lesson, we are dealing with the spirit of backsliding. There is something was said to Peter and forbidden him to do is to go back to the sea to fish again. He said he needs to go to the world to win people to Christ. Do we agree? Jesus said, stop this business. He's not going to give you a lot. I'm going to give you another business, another job to do. Peter agreed. While Jesus was alive, he was there. Fishing, I mean, fishing men, bring people to the kingdom of God to listen to the, to listen to the word of Jesus. Now, I want you to go with me quickly in the book of John chapter 21, where we started. This is where we're going to finish, I believe. John 21. I have not preached yet. I'm just telling you the story. We are about to preach now. <laughs> now, John 21, starting from verse 1. John chapter 21, starting from verse 1. Are we together? Are you tired? I hope you're not tired. Oh. Thank you, Jesus. Now, this is after the death of Jesus. Amen. After Jesus was crucified. And he was no longer to be seen. The disciples left. They were now in the upper room. Listen to what happened. The Bible say, John chapter 21 verse 1. The Bible say, afterward, the Bible say, afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciple by the sea of Tibera. The Bible say, it happened this way. What happened? Verse 2, Simon Peter, Thomas, and Nathanael from Cana in Galilee, the son of Zebedee, the two of them and other disciples, they were together. I am going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, we will go with you. The Bible says, so they went together into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Ha. Huh. Are you listening to me? That night they called nothing. Verse 4. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the edge of the sea, but the disciple did not realize that it was him. Verse 5. He called out to them, Friend, have you caught any fish? No, they answered. Verse 6. He said, Throw your net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some there. When they did, they were unable to pull the net back into the boat. Verse 7. They, uh, no, they were unable to pull back the net into the boat because there were a large number of fish. Verse 7. Then the disciple whom he loved said to Peter, they said to Peter, It is the Lord. As soon Simon Peter heard him saying that, It is the Lord. He wrapped out himself the garment around him. In other words, he left naked. He took off his clothes. For he, he took off his clothes that he have take. Uh, uh, he took off his clothes and he jumped into the water. Amen. Verse eight. The other disciple follow in the boat. They threw out the net of the fish, and they were as far as a hundred meter. Verse night. When they had landed they saw a fire burning coal with fish and bread beside verse 10 jesus said to them 
bring some of the fish that you have just caught. Verse 11, Simon Peter climbed the boat and dragged himself, dragged the nets to the bay of the sea and it was full of large fish with 155. Then Jesus said to them, come and have a breakfast with me. None of the disciples dared to ask him who he was because they knew it was the Lord. Verse 13, Jesus came and took the bread and gave to them. Amen. He took the bread and gave it to them and said, he did, the, he did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus has appeared to his disciples. Now verse 15, when they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, the son of John, do you truly love me? Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lamb. Verse 16, again Jesus asked Simon Peter, the son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. Verse 17, the third time Jesus asked him, Simon Peter, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him for the third times, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things and you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Amen. He said, feed my sheep. Then Jesus add this, verse 18. I tell you the truth, that when you were young, you were able to dress yourself and you were able to go wherever place you want to go. But when you become old, someone else dresses you and show you the way where you want to go. Amen. Ha! Ah, now, we are starting teaching now. Jesus met with Peter in the book of Mark, I mean Luke chapter 5 verse 1 to 10 for the very first time in their life to meet together. And they work all night. It happened that that night they work but they were not able to catch any fish. Jesus appeared, asked for his boat, ministered to the people, and he told him, throw the nets. Now, according to those who fish, the better time for you to catch fish is at night. It's not during the day. In the day you can catch fish, but not in a large number. But night time is the best time for you to catch a lot of fish. But the Bible say, that was during the day, and Jesus gave them destruction. Peter did not believe. He said, if it was during the night, I would have believed. But during the day, Jesus... And plus, there is no, there's no fish around here because we tried all night. And Jesus said, do it. He did it. And Jesus gave him a promise. He said, from today, I want to make you a fisher of man. Are you listening to me? In other words, Peter became a born again Christian that day. He believed in the word of Jesus. He accepted Jesus and he accepted to follow Jesus. We are starting now. Many of us, we were once in the world. Many of us, we were once living in a sin. We came in a counter with Jesus. He has gave us the ability on the things that we were not able to do for ourselves. Just like Peter could not cut fish by himself. Jesus met with us. He changed our life. We are now reflecting different in our community. We are reflecting different in our family. We are reflecting different in our society, in our marriage. Why? Our life is changed. They used to know us smoking ganja, smoking weed, but now we don't smoke. We used to come back home drunk, but we are now no longer taking any alcohol. Our life has changed. We used to be drug addict, but now we don't spend money on drugs. Why? Because we met with a man who changed our life some of us you are not able to sleep at night but Jesus came he gave you peace some of you your relationship was up and down and Jesus came he brought restoration good things begin to happen in your life are you listening to me you are walking with Jesus every time you're praying you sing his presence you cry in the presence of God you become a new person. All things has passed away. Behold, everything has become new to you. You gave up 
from the things of the flesh the desire of the flesh you put it aside you decide to follow Jesus Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. You begin to follow Jesus, but there is one thing by following Jesus that you need to understand because He said, Whosoever want to follow me, he must carry his own cross. This is where the problem is. We are too ready giving, we are in hurry giving our life to Christ. We like it, we like the feeling to fellowship in a local church. We like singing there, we like be calling a pastor, be called a man of God, be called a prophet. You wear the collar, everybody is respecting you. You are a man of God, you are prophetess, a woman of God, you are a singer. Whatever title that you like in the kingdom of God, we give it to you. Yes, but there is something, the way that you want to follow Jesus, you must also carry your own cross there is a cross to carry <laughs> we are dealing with the spirits of backsliding there is a cross for you to carry and Jesus he has shown us an example of carrying a cross it was not easy for Jesus to get at the top of the mountain with his cross Hiya. While his people were beating him, he carried a heavy wood on his shoulder. He was climbing one step by the step. The Bible said the Samaritan women, they cry. They say, Lord, take some water to drink. Jesus said, don't cry for me. Cry for yourself and your children. If they did this to me, I'm a dry wood and they did this to me. I'm, 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 a, I'm a green wood, they did this to me. How much for you that are dry? Ha, you did. <laughs> oh my God. He said, How much for you that are dry? Are you able to carry this cross that I'm carrying? Now, giving our life to Christ it seems so easy. You're no longer seeing that spiritual husband, no longer seeing that spiritual. Everything has become open, no more limitation, no more stagnation. You begin to live a happy life. But what you don't know that you are carrying a cross. Probably when things are going right, you are walking with your cross on your shoulder in the flat platform. You are not yet climbing to the mountain of Golgotha. You are not yet climbing the mountain of Calvary. But the moment you begin to take the step up, the cross becomes heavy for you to bear. What caused people to backslide is that when they begin to climb to the mountain of Golgotha, to the, they begin to climb to the mountain to be crucified, to go to a test that will qualify them that they are truly a child of God. When people begin to talk about you, backstabbing you, speaking against you, God is te testing your faith. That is the time you are going up with your cross. It becomes heavy going on the hill and carrying something. People insulting you. Someone took your husband. Someone said you know give you the money that they promise you things become heavy you don't know how to pay your bill because the problem the promise that was given to you to get the money to sort out your bill is no longer there the money is no longer there it's become heavy so now you begin to think should i go back to that man to that sugar daddy that used to provide for me or should i carry my cross should i go back to that sugar daddy sugar mommy or should i carry my cross to the end is this god testing me or what the spirit of backsliding. What caused backsliding is when the cross becomes heavy for you to carry. Am I speaking to someone tonight? My God. It's when the cross becomes heavy for you to carry. When the cross, I feel like crying. When the cross becomes heavy, we are men of God. There are times the cross becomes heavy. 3 a.m. that you set your alarm to pray, but your body is tired, the cross become heavy. You want to sleep, but the other voice is telling you, pray, pray. This is the time. You want to meditate so you can come and preach to people on TikTok, but your body is tired. It says, sleep, you just came from work. You want to go and preach again. The cross become, there's a time that the cross become heavy. It gets so heavy, gets so heavy. It gets so heavy. It gets so heavy. It's not easy. That's why you must learn how to pray for each other. Don't say he has fallen. You see, he was a fake man of God. Ah, can a man of God used to pray on TikTok? They have called him with someone's wife. They call him, he, he scammed someone. No, you don't know the heaviness of the cross. You don't know the heaviness of the cross. 
let's not be in too hurry and laughing at people because they have fell short of the glory of God or they have fallen learn how to pray put them in prayer say God he is your servant he is your servant she is your servant he is your servant they have fell short of your glory please raise them back again you are watching me on TikTok. Maybe while I'm speaking, your cross became heavy for you. Maybe while I'm talking now, you are not able to take one step to the mountain. The cross became heavy. Peter, his cross became heavy. After the death of Jesus, when Jesus died, a fisherman gave up his post because the Lord Jesus is no longer there he said ah, how am I going to feed my family I met with man I was catching my fish it was my daily job I met with this man at the point of my work I was working earning money to feed my family I was working earning money to pay my bill but this man who gave me another job to be fishing man is now gone so how am I going to survive is he died he said after three days but I don't know it's two days now I don't know me I'm starving and the landlord want to kick us out of the house there is no way I'm going to survive where is my boat? let's go and fish Aya, Peter Jesus forbidding you to, 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 to be catching fish. What are you going back to the sea? The spirit of backsliding. You are not the only one backsliding. You are not. Peter also. The Lord told him never fish again. But in the absence of Jesus, the man took his boat. He said, how am I going to feed my family? Many of you used to fornicate around. Men are paying you money for the job you were doing for them. You met with Jesus, you stop. Now that everything is broke, now that the cross become heavy, you say, let me call that sugar daddy, I still have his number. <laughs> let me call that sugar mommy, I still have his number. Just for the last, just for today. It's, God will understand. Just for today, just for today. Ah, I can't sleep. The only thing used to put me asleep is when I take drug. But ah, this prayer thing, praying at 3 a.m., I can't sleep. I'm working tomorrow. Let me just do the let me just do drug for tonight. It's okay, God will understand. Huh? The spirits of backsliding. <laughs> In French, we said appetit vient à manger. Meaning, if you're not hungry, you say, let me just taste. The more you taste the food, the more you'll be, you feel like eating the food. Are you listening to me? Can someone type on TikTok that God loves me? Can someone type the love of God is, so, is too much for me? Can someone just type the love of God is too much for my life? The love of God. His love is too much for you. God love you. Type God love me. God love me. God love me. Before I continue with this revelation, I want you to type God love me. If you know God love you, I want you to type it. Now listen to what happened. Jesus went crucified after carrying his cross. Peter said, hey, we are dying. We are in the upper room. Nobody is providing bread for all of us to eat. Nobody, there is no food. We are not fasting, we are waiting for the Holy Spirit, but there is no food. He said, there is one thing I know to do better, is to catch fish. He said, there is one thing I know to do better. Where is my boat? He investigated, he said that your boat is still on the beach. It's still available, Peter. Ever since you stopped fishing, nobody took your boat. It's there. That's what the devil trying to bring to our mind. You still know how to do it. 
You see, you were born again in the spirit, not in flesh, but you still know how to do it. You still have his number. You still, you still, you can try. It's still available. You still have that quality. Or oh, you, you have it, the ability still in you. You can do it for one more time. Peter went, he told the other disciples, he said, where are you going? Peter said, I'm going to fish. And they said, we come, we're going to come with you. We're going to help you. We're going to help you, Peter. Let's go catch some fish. The Lord is not here. Listen to me. The absence of Jesus in... The absence of Jesus does not mean that you are alone. Amen? There are times you want to hear the voice of God, but His voice is not speaking to you. It does not mean He has left you. Jesus was absent in physical, but spiritually was with Peter. He was with them spiritually was still with the disciple physically he was not there but spiritually was with them many of us when you know here in god anymore when you know seeing the things that you see before vision and all that prophecy is not given to you and you decide to make your own mind thinking that the lord has forsaken you no the bible says he will never forsake you never abandon you the spirits are backsliding is one we're dealing with tonight Peter went, he backslide, he took his boat, he went, woke all night, he started by 8 p.m. All the way in the morning, they try, they try, they try, they try, they try, they try, no fish. Many of you backslide, you went there, you thought your life would be better than the one that you found in Jesus. That's why Paul said, Oh, you foolish Galatians, who has been with you that you started in the spirit, now you end up in flesh? Who has been with you to go back? Galatians chapter 3 verse 1. Paul is crying, he said, Oh, you foolish Galatians, who has been with you, with you, with you, with you? What type of wizard, what type, what type of charm, juju, voodoo, magic has been used against you that you went back in the world thinking that you find a better life in the world again? Jesus said, The world will hate you because you are mine. You understand? Jesus said to his disciples, said, the world will hate you just simply because you are mine. Meaning, unless you are in the world, you have not given your life to Christ. It's okay for the world. You are one of them. But the moment you become in Jesus, you came in Jesus, and you go back in the world, that's when the devil will mess up with you. <laughs> Remember the, the, the preaching um, of Samson that we read last week. When the Philistine had Samson in their hand, oh, they offer a great sacrifice to their God Dagon. They say, oh, now we have our enemy in our hand. The reason why Paul is crying in Galatians because he knows that when the enemy succeeds to have you back, you are gone. That's why ever since you are backslide, you went back in the world, nothing is working for you. Ever since you went back in the world, nothing is working for you. Nothing is working well for you. And you wonder, why am I not catching any fish? This is my profession. Why men are taking advantage of me? They're sleeping with me. I'm not getting anything. The drug that used to put me asleep, now I, it's as if I need an extra dose. I, things is not going back because it's no longer the same. It's no longer the same. <laughs> Am I preaching to someone tonight? It is no longer the same. No longer the same. Peter tried, tried, tried. He threw his nets. Nothing. Nothing. In the morning. Hiya. In the morning. There came Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He stood at the edge of the sea. Jesus stood at the edge of the sea. He shouted at them. He said, hello friends, have you caught any fish? <laughs> have you caught any fish? In other words, Jesus is saying to you, hello my friend, ever since you went back in the world, has life been good for you? What have you benefited? You decided to go back. Peter, I told you not to be catching fish again, but in my absence you went back to catch fish. What have you caught? Have you got anything? Is any progress? 
you abandon to fish man for to go back and fishing fish what have you caught peter hello my friend i want to ask you a question you that have been backsliding from god what have you got what have you gained ever since you went back in the world is it there anything that you can beat your chest that you have received from the world what is the world has offered to you that is my question for you tonight what have you earned jesus look at them he said hello my friend have you caught anything jesus said anything is there even in the small fish have you caught any small fish they say no <laughs> the same answer they gave to him in luke chapter 5 from 1 to 10 the same answer they gave him there when he met him for the first time he said we have walked all night we have walked all night we have not caught anything and jesus he said to them as he said to them before he said true throw your nets in the right side of the boat the bible said they did as he said they threw the net they wanted to pull it was so heavy they wanted to pull the bible said they could not pull because there were so many fish peter because he backslided higher you see when you backslide from god you shut your ear to listen to the voice of god when you backslide from god the ability to recognize the ways and the voice of god it will go away from you when you go back to the world the voice of god become hard for you to hear for you to maintain listening from god you need to stay in the presence of god am i speaking to someone is it anybody hear me if you are away from the presence of god it's become difficult for you to hear the voice of god therefore you need to stay in the presence of god for you to hear the voice of god are you listening to me all the disciples that were on the boat with peter when the instruction was given to them to throw to throw out the net and when they find out that there were a lot of fish they quickly recognized that it's only jesus who's able to do in other words they were able to understand the voice of god and the ways of the lord the way jesus do his things miracle they quickly told peter they said peter it is the lord peter said huh they said this man who told us to throw our net it is the lord peter peter we are telling you the truth this is the lord there's no man can say a word and happen exactly as he said he must be the lord this one it is the lord it is the lord it is the lord the bible say when peter <laughs> should i continue When Peter heard from the disciple that it is the Lord, the Bible says, he took off his clothes, he was naked, then he jumped to the sea. The one used to sit beside Jesus, the one that in whom Jesus loved the most, the right hand of Jesus when he needed to go to the garden or I mean to the mountain of transfiguration he took Peter James and John meaning Jesus loved them so much and Peter was willing to do anything for Jesus he caught someone's here for the sake of Christ he was not ashamed of Jesus Christ of Nazareth but on that particular day that he backslide he became shame of himself he jumped on the sea naked because the one who told him don't sin again don't fish again don't fish in the sea again he was now in front of him 
in other words Peter recognized that he did not obey the word of the Lord he was ashamed Jesus to found him in the place where he was forbidden to be that's what sin make us to become are you listening to me that's what sin make us to become ashamed of ourselves that's the reason why you hear someone say I'm not gonna pray anymore I told God this will be the last time that I will masturbate I will watch porn I told God this is the last time I will do drug this is the last time I'll fornicate but I found myself doing it so you become guilt of yourself you begin to feel ashamed of yourself because you backslide you jump on the sea naked because you're running you found yourself doing what you told God you would not do you found yourself doing what God say you are not supposed to do again the spirit of backslide he pushes you to go back to where you were before when a boy who was in his father's house his father was so rich a prodigal son he said give me a portion of my wealth he went into the world he took a portion of his wealth went to the world when money finished when everything he had has finished he went to print zero he backslide he said I must go back to my father look because he was ashamed of himself he said even needs it will cost me to become his servant he low himself to the level of the servant of his father he said but I must go back but this time I won't be a son I want to be a, a servant a servant you were once called a child of God a servant of God but sin won't make you to run away from the presence of God see all this shame it's because you backslide but tonight there is Jesus who loves you so much are you listening to me let's continue our message I'm about to finish and pray for people listen to me now the Bible said the Bible said Peter jump out of the boat because he was shame of himself because he was shame of himself the other apostles they went out of the boat to where Jesus was they found fish and bread and a fire burning the Bible say Peter managed back to the boat why did he not came him straight to where in the beach where Jesus was because he had no clothes on him he was naked so what sin does to us is to leave us naked when Adam became naked Jesus came I mean the Lord came to him in the evening because he have seen it remember Genesis chapter uh, uh, Genesis chapter 3 the Bible said when the Lord came he said Adam Adam where are you Adam said I'm hiding because I'm naked and the Lord said who said you are naked straight away God understood that he ate the fruit he backslid from his presence he was no longer with him what sin does is you remove your clothes there are people who are walking with their clothes but spiritually they're naked where the devil can read you from your head to your toes but when you are in the presence of God you are clothed not only with the physical clothes but you are also clothed with the garment of the spirit so devil the devil cannot see you naked they cannot mess with your life there is this garment of glory that is protecting you Adam said I'm, 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 I'm hiding because I'm naked I'm naked I'm naked God I can never be in your presence like this I'm a sin man I ate what you told me not to eat so did Peter he jumped to the sea naked why <laughs> because he did what Jesus told him not to do then he got back to the boat 
put on his clothes, he came where Jesus was. The Bible said Jesus took the fish, he gave to each of them. He break the bread, he share with them. Then he look at Peter. Listen to this revelation. He look at Peter and said, Peter, Simon Peter, son of John, do you love me? Peter said, Master, you know I love you. He said again, Peter, Simon Peter, the son of John, do you love me? Peter said, Lord, you know I love you. For the third times, he said again, Simon Peter, do you love me? Peter broke down in tears. Higher. When Jesus said for the first time, Peter, do you love me? He said, yes, I love you. Jesus said, feed my lamb. Peter, do you love me? Yes, I love you, Lord. Feed my sheep. Peter, do you love me? Yes, I love you, Lord. Take care of my sheep. Peter cried. The reason why, are you listening to me? The reason why Jesus asked Peter three times, do you love me, Simon Peter, son of John? Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? Three times Peter cried is to fix what went wrong are you listening to me i must focus on tiktok now because you are watching me right now you need to get this revelation fresh peter was a very good servant of jesus a very great disciple obeyed jesus everything but the problem started the day jesus was arrested when jesus was arrested peter ran he went where the pharisee was they asked Peter in Luke chapter 22 verse 54 to 62. Luke 22 verse 64 to 62. I mean, Luke chapter 22 verse 54 to 62. They asked Peter. They said to Peter, are you not one of Jesus' disciples? He denied for the first time. He said, no, I don't know him. He went the other side they ask him again they say are you not we used to see you with jesus second time peter said no i never knew him in my life who is he i don't know him the third times they said peter you look like jesus we know you was you we know you peter are you not the one who was with jesus peter said i don't know him he denied that many times three times peter denied Jesus as Peter denied Jesus for, 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 for the third times the Bible say he cried he cried as he denied Jesus he opened a door to be used by the devil he opened a door himself to backslide from the presence of God because the Bible say in Romans chapter 10 verse 9 if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is your Lord, that you shall be saved. It's by confessing in the mouth and believing in the heart that man made into salvation. Are you listening to me? So the salvation comes when you accept and you confess with your mouth. You lose your salvation when also you denied Jesus. You say no. Is not the Lord of my life is not the devil. then you give the devil access in your life why those people backslide is when they come to Jesus they believe in him they see the glory of God but when things begin to go wrong they say ah, does God really exist does if God is alive why am I going to this God are you not seeing what I'm going to that is a wrong thing for a Christian to do. The moment you do that act, you open the door to the devil. Because Peter denied Jesus, that's why he had the thought to go back fishing. I feel like I'm preaching to myself. Nobody is listening to me. The moment Peter denied Jesus, 
that's when the thoughts begin to come to him to go back and fish he's no longer here they have arrested him when he's going to come back i don't know he begin to question himself let me go back to do what i used to do before because jesus is not here the cross become heavy for him to climb on the mountain with and he went back fishing most of us who are christian you find yourself among pagan you don't want to act holy because they will laugh at you you give access to the devil they are drinking you said ah, let me also drink so that I can, I can make them to not think that i'm anti-social no show yourself who you are everywhere you go i'm a christian i will die christian you put a gun in my head i will still confess jesus is my lord i will not going to deny jesus paul said for me to die is to gain are you listening to me he also said i am not ashamed of the gospel because it is power to them that believe unto salvation we are not ashamed of the gospel because it's power to them that believe unto salvation many of you you have denied jesus in many ways the reason why you are backsliding in the presence of god in the things of god because you are once denied jesus people are going to party you want to go with them and your friends say ah why are you wearing a long dress you need to let your leg to be seen you are young show yourself you have a nice body why are you covering it you say ah just for tonight i want my friend not to feel like ah i'll be i'll be different from them you went you put a short skirt that moment you are gone that moment the seed of the devil has planted to you eat this fruit you will not die who told you you will die it's just for one night put on a short dress eve ate the fruit and the spirit of the lord departed away from them is the holy spirit preaching better tonight they ate the fruit the spirit departed away from them they became naked you listen to your friend you went back in your old life you went there why are you not drinking take a soap paul said don't be drunk with wine but be filled with the spirit of god that's why he's crying he said oh you foolish galatian who has been with you you have been witched so many times by your friend influence from friend you have been witched by your old life you have been witched in many things and you went back in the world but because the love of jesus he wanted to repair where peter fell short because he denied him three times that's why he asked peter three times he said simon peter son of john do you love me he said yes lord i do because there they say we saw you with jesus he said no i don't know him so for him to come back to the presence of god he must accept also three times that he loved jesus <laughs> he said simon peter do you love me yes i do simon peter son of john do you love me yes lord i do simon peter do you love me yes i do he cried jesus said take care of my sheep look after my own tonight god is asking you a question do you love him do you love him do you love him you are tired of going away from the presence of god you want to stay focused serving god you don't want today you pray tomorrow you want a consistency life of prayer god is asking you do you love him do you brother and sister you're watching me do you love god because tonight we are breaking the power of backsliding the teaching itself it has already deal with you it has already deal with that spirit before we even pray what i just preach now teach now it has already deal with that spirit if you are spiritual you understand what i'm saying the message alone has already addressed with the issue but we are going now to declare and pray higher my bible is closed i will not give more bible for us tomorrow michelle remind me sammy joe remind me tomorrow may i not preach any other message when i come live here tomorrow i must preach 
a consistency life of prayer. Amen. How to be consistent in prayer. Amen. Please, if I come with another topic, keep typing prophet. You say you preach this, you preach this. Because I feel like we need to be constant in life of prayer. Enough of denying who we are. I told you, there are times that the cross can get heavy. But let's not change our confession. Just because Islamic is giving people you want to become a Muslim. In Buddha, you want to become a Buddha. No. When the cross gets heavy, keep walking. God will send you a helper. The Bible says when Jesus' cross became heavy, they found a man called Simon. <laughs> I think Simon of Siren or something. He said, What's your name? He said, Simon. He said, They cut the rope. They say, You now carry his cross. <laughs> Let Jesus walk by. Listen to me. If the cross begin to get heavy, just know that a helper is around the corner. Ah, yeah. When the cross become, becomes heavy, just know that there is a breakthrough somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. Someone is about to take your load. When the cross becomes heavy, just know that there is a, a exit door somewhere. There is a help somewhere that is coming. Every time you feel heaviness, you're about to give up back to this backslide. Just know there's a miracle, a breakthrough, something God is about to do. Are you listening to me? Let us pray. Let us pray. Then we can finish. Thank you, Jesus. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord.